In this video, I break down the various details of AV nodal blocks and help you understand how to quickly and reliably identify them. When we use the term AV nodal block or heart block, it is important to recognize that these are delays or disruptions in conduction that occur somewhere between the atria and the ventricles and are very different from bundle branch blocks, which we will cover later when we're learning about 12 lead interpretation. Heart blocks can be either permanent or transient, they can be minor or they can be very significant. Patient assessment is the most important indicator of clinical significance. Not all blocks need treatment, but some require immediate intervention, and others should get your attention and cause you to prepare for what could develop. Common causes of AV blocks include acute myocardial infarction, especially those involving occlusion of the right coronary artery, increased parasympathetic tone, calcification or other diseases of the conduction system, medication overdoses, especially from DIG or tricyclic antidepressants. There are two key components to identifying heart blocks. The first step is to identify if there is a P wave for every QRS and if there is a QRS following every P wave. If not, is there a pattern that you can identify to where those aren't matching up? The second step is to assess the PR intervals and determine if they're normal. And what we need to focus on is are they consistent in length or are they changing in length? Or is it even possible to measure those PR intervals? We're looking for the pattern to those changes because that can be critical in this identification. If every P wave has a QRS and they all have PR intervals that are longer than 0.20, this is a first degree AV block. If the PR gradually gets longer until a QRS is dropped, this is a second degree type 1 also called a Winkybach block. If every time the PR interval produces a QRS, that PR interval is the same, but sometimes the P wave produces no QRS at all, this is a second degree type 2. And finally, if the P waves march across the strip regularly, and so do the QRS complexes, but there is no apparent connection between the two, this is a third degree block. In this case, no impulse is getting through the AV node at all. So the ventricular rhythm is being generated in the junction, the bundle of his or the ventricles. That is why the QRS in a third degree block is usually wide and at a slow rate. The lower the point of origin, the wider, uglier, and slower the ventricular rate will be. Think of the heart block labels as a progression. Not all patients follow them in a stepwise fashion from one to the next, but our labeling essentially is describing the worsening levels of conduction delay or blockage. A first degree block is really no big deal because every impulse still goes through, but just with a slight delay. A second degree type one, we have some drop beats, it's still a small problem. A second degree type two, there's no pattern to the dropped beats typically, but it could lead to serious problems and needs to get our attention because the concern is it could go on to become a third degree block. And in the case of a third degree block, the AV node is no longer functioning and that is a serious problem. One point about labeling or naming these blocks, just to confuse things a little, Second degree blocks were apparently first identified by Dr. Mobitz, which is why they often get a label of Mobitz type 1 or Mobitz type 2. If you leave Mobitz off and just simply call it a second degree type 1 or second degree type 2, we're talking about the exact same thing. Somewhere along the line, Dr. Winkybach was credited with identifying the second degree type 1 specifically, which is why that was often called a Winkybach block. And it's more fun to say or to make a rhyme out of, but a Winkybach block, a second degree type 1, and a Mobitz type 1 are all the exact same rhythm. Here's another way to think about heart blocks that may help you remember the differences. Heart blocks are like communication in a relationship. In the honeymoon phase, things work great. She is the SA node and asks him to take out the garbage. That's the impulse while he's watching TV. And he, the AV node, jumps up and immediately does so. Over time, things can slow down. 
After a while, he still takes out the garbage, but now he waits for the next commercial break each time. The impulse is still passed along reliably, the garbage always goes out, but it's just slightly delayed. As the relationship becomes strained, he gets slower and slower to do what he is asked. Sometimes he jumps right up, sometimes it's at the next commercial break, sometime at the end of the program he's watching, and occasionally he delays so long he forgets to take it out at all. Now things are getting worse, and she resorts to yelling when she wants the garbage out. Sometimes this works, and he jumps up and takes it out. Other times, he gets angry and ignores the request completely. And as the relationship deteriorates, she keeps yelling, and he takes out the garbage when he feels like it. But there's no connection between her yelling, think of the sinus node firing, and his response, think of the ventricles firing on their own, and slowly. Let's look at the specific criteria and parameters for each type of heart block. In a first degree AV block, the only difference between this and a normal sinus rhythm is that every PR interval will be greater than 0.20 and they'll be consistent. We label it as a sinus rhythm with a first degree block. We leave normal off the name because it's not 100% normal at this point. The significance? A first degree AV block is a normal finding. It's common in young adults, may be a normal consequence of aging in some. It also can be caused by medications such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or digoxin, or even be related to cardiac disease. But a first degree block has no impact on cardiac output and requires no treatment or intervention. In a second degree heart block type 1, also known as a winky block as we mentioned, we see a progressive lengthening of the PR interval until a QRS is dropped. The origin of the block is usually high in the AV node. P waves are present and the P to P interval time stays the same because the sinus node is doing its job. It usually has at least one normal PR interval, but then subsequent PR intervals lengthen until one of those impulses fails to go through it all and we see a dropped or missing QRS. This drop beat may occur on every third, fourth, or even fifth sinus beat, and then the system resets and the cycle starts over. As a result of the drop beats, there are more P waves than QRS complexes on the ECG, and because it originates high in the AV node, the QRS complex is usually narrow and relatively normal in appearance. It's acceptable to call it a second degree type 1 AV block, a Mobitz type 1, or a Winky block. Use whatever label helps you remember it effectively. A second degree type 2 is usually located near the bundle of his. We recognize it by identifying that the P waves occur in a regular pattern across the ECG strip because again, the sinus node is doing its job. We also notice, however, that not every P wave produces a QRS. When we look closer, we will note that every time the P wave does produce a QRS, that PR interval is the same distance. It may be of regular length or a little longer, since this is an AV node that is not working perfectly, but it is the same each time it is there for you to measure. At other times, the P wave fails to conduct through the AV node at all and is followed by a pause with no QRS until the next sinus beat comes along. There may or may not be a pattern to those drop beats. For example, you may see a situation where every third beat is dropped, but you may also see P waves that fail to go through randomly and in no particular order. The clinical significance of this rhythm is not about where it is now, but where it may be headed. Most patients will tolerate a second degree type 2 just as I described with the earlier blocks, unless it is resulting in poor perfusion because of how slow the ventricular response is. The bigger concern is that it reflects a more significant failure of the AV node and is at risk for progressing to a third degree block, which is clinically significant. In a third degree block, the AV node is no longer conducting impulses at all, and the atria and ventricles are firing and contracting independently of each other. We identify this phenomenon by noting a few key facts. The P waves are present, regular, and consistent, the QRS is also regular and consistent, and often those QRS complexes are wide and coming at a slow rate because they are originating below the AV node. This is also referred to as AV dissociation because there is no connection or relationship between what is happening in the atria and what is happening in the ventricles. 
The cardiac output that this rhythm produces is determined by where the ventricular beats originate, which determines how normal the contractions will be and how slow the rate. The lower than the heart the escape pacemaker fires, the slower and less efficient the result. When we analyze this rhythm, we see the P to P is regular, the R to R is regular, but there's no relationship between them. If you try to measure PR intervals, they will vary widely because those P waves are not producing those QRS beats. Third degree blocks can be caused by acute MI, especially right-sided and inferior, can be caused by CHF or coronary heart disease, or complications from valve replacement surgery. Clinically, this is a critical finding, especially if the ventricular beats are originating low in the heart. This will typically produce a very poor cardiac output. The ventricles are ineffective pacemakers and they fatigue easily. And if they stop firing and nothing is making its way past the AV node, the result is asystole. To summarize, in a first degree block, every impulse still goes through, but with a slight delay. We identify it by simply noting that it looks like a normal sinus rhythm, but with a long PR interval. In a second degree type one, the PR interval gradually lengthens until a QRS is dropped, and then the pattern repeats. Think, long, longer, longer, dropped. With a second degree type two, there is no pattern to the drop beats, but every time the AV node does its job, it does so consistently, but sometimes the impulse doesn't go through at all. And finally, with a third degree block, the AV node is no longer allowing any impulses to go through. We see P waves firing regularly, because that is what the sinus node does, and we see regular QRS complexes, usually slow and wide, doing their own thing because it's coming from another pacemaker somewhere low in the heart, but there is no connection between what is happening in the atria and what is happening in the ventricles. This rhythm requires immediate intervention.